What is up YouTube? It's Josh. This is the Den of Nerds. And first of all guys, I want to apologize about the lack of Star Wars videos and videos kind of in general. Um, from this week, I've been kind of dealing with a little bit of a sickness. It's kind of had me down. Um, in fact, I'm still kind of dealing with it. So I apologize if I freak out and vomit all over the camera when I'm recording this. But anyways, let's get right into this video. This video is about Revan, okay? And I'm going to put forward a theory on why I believe Revan is going to come into canon. Now, of course, this is mostly speculation. None of this is confirmed, so don't go out and say that it's 100% sure or anything like that. But I am going to put forward some points that I think are going to, at the very least, intrigue you and at the most convince you completely that the Mandalorian fan favorite Jedi is going to come into canon. Now let's get right into it. Now a lot of this has to do with what is going on in Star Wars Rebels right now. Now if you're not watching Star Wars Rebels, I highly suggest doing that. I've said this over and over and over again. I think the show is incredible and one of the best things that the show does is bring stuff from Expanded Universe into canon. Case in point would be Thrawn. Okay, last year at Star Wars Celebration, it was explained and released that Thrawn was coming into canon and he was going to first show up in Rebels. Now, here's the thing when I say that Thrawn is in canon, it does not mean that he is only in existence in the show. What it means is he is in existence in the entire fabric and story that is Star Wars going on and on and on for infinity. Uh, the basic, the best way that I can explain this, guys, is that Timothy Zahn is doing a novel, a new canon novel with Thrawn in it that takes place in his younger years, which is going to fill out not only what's going on with Thrawn, but also what was going on with the Empire at that time. And I guarantee you that there's going to be some dope stuff in there between Sheev Palpatine and Thrawn. Because, you know, if you know what I'm talking about with Expanded Universe, they had some really cool interactions when Thrawn was younger. And I'm really looking forward to see what that's all going to look like in canon. But anyways, let's get back to it. Now, what am I saying here? The point is that Rebels is a great conduit for bringing stuff from the Expanded Universe into canon. Okay, now there's a couple of things that are going on in the current arc taking place on the show right now that hint towards the possibility of Revan coming into canon. This all has to do with Sabine, with the Darksaber, with Mandalorians, and her gaining an army, which will then join the Rebellion. Now, two major things became canon in this arc, and they both hint at Revan. The first would be Mandalorian Jedi. Now, I did a quickie on this video. Check that out if you want to get some more cool info and images from that. But the basic premise is that Rebels took the idea of a Mandalorian Jedi, made it canon. Not only did they do that, they told us about the first Mandalorian Jedi ever to be accepted into the Order, and that would be Tar Vizsla, okay? Now, Tar Vizsla was the one who created the Dark Saber. He was certainly a Mandalorian Jedi, and everything that that implies is now in canon. So that, so to speak, sets the stage for the possibility of Revan. The second thing that the show has made canon is the Mandalorian and Jedi Wars. Now, if you're a fan of Expanded Universe and you know the history of Malak and Revan and Knights of the Old Republic and all of those awesome things, you will know that the Mandalorian Jedi Wars, which lasted almost two decades, are a major staple in that timeline and very, very important to not only Revan and his fall to the dark side, but his overall path as a character, okay? In the most recent episode, which is completely amazing, you should totally check out, but in that episode, Sabine is handed some Mandalorian gauntlets, which are literally designed to stop and um, combat all of the tricks that the Jedi use in combat. And while training with a Jedi Master, Kanan Jarrus, she utilizes some of these weapons and is literally told that these tricks will amount to something, but they will not save you in the long run. Kanan also name drops the Mandalorian Jedi War by saying 
Here's a history lesson. The Jedi won that war. Now, we don't know anything else beyond that, but in the example of the expanded universe, the Jedi that won that war was literally Revan. Revan and Malak won that war for the Jedi Order before then falling to the dark side and reestablishing the Sith. But do we know that that is a for sure parallel to that war? No, absolutely not. We're given very little information, but a war between Mandalore and the Jedis is now canon, as is the prospect of a Mandalorian Jedi. You kind of see where I'm going with this. Now, the last point I want to make is about the showrunner, writer, and producer of Rebels, and that would be Dave Filoni. Now, if you've been following the channel for a long time, you know I absolutely love Dave Filoni. He and I went to the same college. Um, I've heard him speak before. Very cool guy. Uh, and, and the Padawan of George Lucas. Someday I'll tell the story that he told me about first meeting George Lucas and getting the gig, but here's what's important. He was the, also the showrunner and producer of Clone Wars. Okay, now Clone Wars is canon, but it was actually in production while Disney was purchasing Lucasfilms and the Star Wars IP. So a bunch of weird stuff happened when Disney bought Star Wars, and one of the things that happened was that Clone Wars was made canon but everything that they were working on in its last season was all trashed. They got the opportunity to do this, these last three episodes, which have to do with Yoda and possibly the Wills and his training with Qui-Gon. Very, very cool stuff. However, a lot of the stuff that they were working on got trashed and never saw the light of day. Now, if you're a hardcore Star Wars fan, you know exactly where I'm going with this. One of the things that Filoni and his team were working on was literally bringing Revan into canon. I'm going to put some images up here. This is literally a not completely rendered, but at least partially rendered version of Revan. And you can watch this scene online where basically these dark entities, including Revan, are talking about the dark side and they're talking about Skywalker. So Filoni was in the process of weaving Revan into the Star Wars canon that he knew within Clone Wars. Now, this was shut off, but I feel like it was not shut off because it was a quote unquote bad idea, but it was shut off because they were establishing the story group at Lucasfilm and they needed to kind of tie up loose ends, reorganize everything and get a real idea of where their continuity and their canon was going to be and where it was going to be led to. So Dave Filoni, who is now the person creating Rebels, has started to bring all of these interesting things, including Mandalorian. Jedi and including the Mandalorian Jedi Wars into his show. Now Dave has been known to take things from Rebels and bring them back, or rather things from Clone Wars and bring them back into Rebels. Ahsoka Tano is a great example. The 501st with Rex is another great example. He does this. He takes things from that show and brings them back into his real show, or his new show. So I don't think it is outside of the realm of possibility to say that Dave Filoni wishes to bring Revan into canon and he now has a perfect way to do so. So that is basically the three points of evidence that I wanted to make uh, you guys aware of. This all has to do with Revan. I really do think that Dave is going to bring Revan into canon. And now with the story group in place, there is a possibility that we could do this on a huge, large, impactful scale for the entire universe of Star Wars. So let me know in the comments section below, what do you think of all this? I mean, do you think it's possible? Do you think I'm really pulling at straws here? Or do you think it's more or less a sure thing that we're going to get that Mandalorian Jedi in the canon in some way? Love to hear your thoughts. Hit me up in the comment section. All right, let's check that nerd card really quickly. The question is going to be about Knights of the Old Republic and the Mandalorian Jedi Wars. The question is, what is the name of the planet 
in which the shadow generator goes off and the Mandalorian Jedi Wars is completely finished. At least part of this name is now canon as well, and you guessed it, it was brought into canon by Dave Filoni. But the question remains, what is the name of the planet in which the Shadow Generator is used and the Mandalorian Jedi War is ended? Answer that question in the comment section below. Like this video if you thought it was cool, and subscribe to this channel to get all the cool Star Wars videos that you can handle. As I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and nerdy day. See you.